Hi class, in this video we're going to be managing large projects. So to get this some of these labs to work, we need to fake some hosts that uh, we can work with. So I made some changes to our inventory file. So just to let you know, I'm signed in as DevOps and I'm in our working directory. So I'm going to open up our inventory file with code. So we've had this already. So I'm going to add two IP addresses, actually four IP addresses, to represent all four of our hosts. The other thing that I need to do is because these two boxes are Windows machines and they don't include the host name, what happens is they air out when you connect to an actual Windows server. So I'm going to go back to my lab to start all of my machines. So what I did was I created something called an alias. So when I refer to this machine, I'm actually referring to dc.contoso.com. When I refer to this machine, I'm actually referring to ms.contoso.com. And I also have to label those as Windows, put those in the Windows group so they get those variables. The other things that, that I've done to the inventory file is I created two groups. Group 1, Group 2. Group 1 has fake host 1 through fake host 5 and Group 2 has fake host 3 through fake host 7. So 3, 4, and 5 are in both groups. So I'm going to close this out. The other thing that I did was I needed to resolve those host names to an IP address. So I'm using our local inventory file to, uh, excuse me, our local host file to resolve those names to the loopback. So fake host 1 through fake host 7 will really point to the machine that I'm on. So what I'm going to do is do, because it's, um, it's a protected file, we need to run sudo vi Etsy host. I need you to go to the bottom of the file, which is right here. And I'm going to hit a lowercase o that will put me in insert mode below my current line. So I go to the bottom of the file, hit a lowercase o. And then I want you to type all these lines. Actually, I don't need the last line. I was testing things. All this information is on D2L. Then when you're done typing all the lines, and that's a tab between there, and that's a space between the long name and the short name, I want you to press escape to exit out of uh, input mode and hit colon WQ to save your work. Okay, so when we look at Our known host file. Those are all the server keys that we've connected to already. When I look at this file, I won't have anything for the fake host. Even though it's the same key as the machine that I'm on, it associates those keys to a host name. So because I'm faking that host name, I need to accept all of the certificates for each one of those host names, even though it's the same certificate. Um, so what I'm going to do is run a little command that will connect to all those machines, accept the certificate, run a command called a host name, and di then disconnect. So what I'm going to do is, if I run this command, seq, 
1 through 7. It just prints out 1 through 7. It's called sequence 1 through 7. So that's good because I can use that in a loop. So I'm going to do 4, I, N. Now I'm hitting a back tick, not a quote. That's under the tilde on the top left hand corner of your screen. SEQ 1 through 7. Then back tick again. So this is kind of like a double execution. Before it runs the for loop, it's going to execute this and replace this with 1 through 7. So my elements of my loop will be first time through the loop, I will be 1. Second time through the loop, I will be 2. Third time through the loop, I will be 3, and so on. So it's just an easier way of instead of having to type 1 through 7. So I'm going to hit enter then do then everything between do and done is the contents of my for loop so i'm going to do ssh fake host dollar sign i because the first time through the loop i want it to be one second time through the loop i want it to be two so it'll be a fake host one dot contoso.com i'm going to do an o for an option, and the command I'm going to run, I'll explain that in a moment, is host name. Just print out my host name. So basically, there's an option in SSH, the SSH program, called Strict Host Key Checking. And I got that wrong. It is case sensitive. Host Key Checking, accept new keys. So it's going to connect to those machines, accept the new key, and associate it with that host name that I'm connecting to. I've already done this script. So yours, your output's going to look different than mine. You're only going to have one and two. Then done. So it's just going to connect to fake host one, fake host two, fake host three, accept the keys, and you'll be done. It's going to go through the loop seven times. Now, if I look at my inventory file, I need to also do it to these two IPs. Because in my my home directory, the .ssh folder, there's a file called known host. I need to associate my keys with uh, those IPs. So instead of breaking into multiple lines, I'm going to do it in one line this time. Just to show you that a for loop doesn't have to be in one big long line. Uh, it doesn't have to be in multiple lines. It could be one big long line. For IN, again, the back tick, sequence, 4 and 5, 4 through 5, back tick again. So basically, I just want to go through the loop. The first time through the loop, I'll be 4. Second time through the loop, I'll be 5. I'm going to type a semicolon. That's where I would have press entered. I'm going to do do SSH. 10.0.0. Dollar sign I. First time through the loop, that'll be a 4. Then the second time, it'll be a 5. I'm going to accept the key. I'm just going to run a command and disconnect quickly. I'm putting another semicolon, that's the end of that line, then done. That's the, essentially the end of that command. And your known host file should have hosts for everything. Guys, RHS2 is listed twice, so it knows, it's smart enough to know that that key is being used on two different machines, or on two different ways to refer to that machine. I could refer to that machine with a fully qualified host name, or I could refer to that machine as 10.0.0.5.
here's the one for 10.0.0.4. Here's all my fake host keys. When we run it to Ansible, we don't want to be prompted to hit yes to accept the keys. I just want to get that out of the way. The next thing we need to fix is I didn't think when we originally set up our network that this was going to be a problem. But when I refer to these two IP addresses when I connect to the domain, because that's, that's going to be the DC and the MS server. The problem is the host name, the domain name is included in that IP address. It doesn't say 10.0.0.2.contoser.com. So it doesn't know which domain you're trying to connect to. So what we can do is, I'm going to do, this is a protected file again, only we can make changes to it. So I'm going to do sudo etsy krb5.conf. That is my Kerberos file. We didn't have to configure this manually last time because it was, we did a bunch of commands that configured this for us. So we're going to edit this file. Again, all this is in the documentation. So what we're going to do is go all the way down to this hash mark. I'm going to hit a lowercase o. I'm going to press escape because I already did it. You hit lowercase o and then you're going to add this line. Notice the indentation. Make it line up with everything else in that, that section. So this is just a comment. So what we're telling it that if we don't specify a domain, the default uh, domain is contoso.com. Again, it's uppercase. You're going to stay in insert mode. And you're going to go all the way to the bottom, and you're going to add these two lines here at the bottom. Doccontoso.com equals uppercase contoso.com. Contoso.com lowercase equals contoso.com. So once you've done with that, you hit escape to get out of insert mode, colon WQ to write and quit. And so at this point, what we've done is we've updated our inventory file. So we have some a bunch of machines to work with. In reality, we're all pointing to the same machine. These are all pointing to uh, RHS1. We're going to update our Etsy host file so we can resolve those names to an IP because they're not in DNS. And we're just going to resolve them to the loopback address, meaning point them to the same machine, both the long name and the short name. Also, I want to point out in our inventory file that we created two aliases. So when we refer to 10.0.0.2, we really are referring to dc.contoso.com. Uh, 10.0.0.3, we're really referring to ms.contoso.com. And we had to label those two as windows, put those in the windows group, so they get our group bars file and they log in as administrator, because that's where we store that connection information. The next thing we did was we connected to all of our fake hosts to accept the SSH key, the server SSH key. We connected to all the machines by IP addresses, both RHS1 and RHS2, to grab the uh, security key, the SSH key, and associate those with the IP address. Lastly, we defined in our Kerberos configuration file the default domain. So if um, you don't specify a domain name in the host, like ms.contoso.com, it knows what domain it's part of. So now we're going to start creating some scripts. So I'm going to clear my screen. And I'm going to type code lab 6 asterisk to open them all up. You're going to follow the book and you're going to do one at a time, save your work and exit. But since I've already had them all typed, 
I'm just going to do this to open them all up at the same time. Okay, so I did a simple script. I kind of deviated from what the book did. When you look at the book, they, they don't really give you anything here. All they're doing is they're just kind of showing you this line. So to have something more complete, what I'm doing is I'm using that magic variable uh, inventory host name. An inventory host name is a different than an actual host name. When I say inventory host name, I'm referring to the name that's inside of the inventory file. Again, that doesn't really have to match the computer name. That could be something different. In our case, um, bighost1.contoso.com is pointing to really rhs1.contoso.com. So I'm referring to the inventory host name. That's a magic variable. We don't have to set it. It's set, it's set automatically. Okay. So uh, basically, what I'm doing is in single quotes, I'm saying wildcard character. So basically, this is going to print out every host in our host file. So I'm going to open up a terminal. No, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm going to go back here just so you can see the full screen. Guys, you check your work. You verify that you have no errors in your code with the syntax check switch but I'm going to just execute it because I, I know everything is good. I'm going to do lab 6 script 1. So it's at that default task of gathering facts, connecting to all the machines. So even I, though I have hosts listed several times, if I cat my Okay, so I ran script one. I'm going to cat my inventory file. So if I look at these things, I can see that servers are listed in multiple groups, plus they're also here ungrouped. So even though they're in multiple group, like RHS1 is there, RHS1 is here, 10.0.0.2 is here, it's also here. Even though it's in multiple groups, it only runs it once per host. So for 10.0.0.4, 10.0.0.5, I will only see the output for, for that inventory host. Now, when I say inventory host, again, I'm, I'm referring to the host name in my inventory file, not the actual name in the machine. So let's go over here to script two. So guys, after you type this script, copy all of this. Then paste it here. The only difference between script two or any of these scripts is just this line. So you're going to paste script one's content into script two and change this one line. Don't retype this entire script every single time. So in this script, I'm going to refer to anything in my inventory host file that starts with 10.0.0. asterisk or uh, 10.0.0, which will be 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's run script 2. And again, it's just going to print out the host name. The book, they, they leave out the rest of the playbook because it's really not that important because the purpose of this lab is to go over and show you how to use wildcard characters if you want to manipulate a bunch of servers at one time or a bunch of client machines. And again, it connected to all four machines based on their IP addresses. According to my filter, all these machines start with 10.0.0. .0 .0. The next script, script two, we're going to do another filter, but this time, we look for anything starting with fhost. 
So f of 1, f of 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So I'm going to run script 3. And again, it runs it for all machines starting with F host. Let's go back to our script. The next one is I can run based on group memberships. So I want to run this against everyone in this part of group one and everyone in this part of group two. So I'm going to go back to my terminal. I'm going to do Ansible group one list host. Those are all the machines that are in group one. Here's all the machines that are in group two. Now, if I do group one and group two together, it doesn't duplicate any machine. It's If it's in both groups, like three, four, five are in both groups. Three, four, five are in group one. Three, four, four, five are in group two. When I list all of them, it's only going to list the host once. So let's run script four. Even if one host is in two different groups, it'll only run the task for one host. So in this case, it did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know why they're out of order, but they are. So I can put in my playbook group names separated by groups. You don't have to worry if uh, a host is in two groups. It won't run it twice. So let's look at script five. Now this is interesting. We're going to run it for group one for any computer that's in group one and in group two. So we put a comma and the ampersand single symbol. So I'm going to go over to my terminal. I'm going to show you group one. then group two, so it's only going to run for those machines that are in both groups. So F host three through five are in both groups. And I can do that and symbol here as well. Group one and the and symbol. Hold on, I have someone at the door. Okay. Sorry, I forgot to put quotes around this. So now that's only going to show me items that are in both groups. So let's run this script, which is script 5. Again, I've already checked all mine for syntax, made sure I had no errors. So, three, four, and five. So let's look at our next script. Now we're going to filter out. We only want to run these this task against all the members of group one, but not fhost1.contoso.com. So we're going to just 
here's how here's what the lab the guided lab that they have you do they just have you run all these commands without giving you a task I think it's better to actually integrate them in a in a playbook group one comma not rhs1.contoso.com f host one sorry and again you got to put the quotes when you're doing filtering like this and we're going to list host so there it is two three four and five and I can see that group one really contains one through five if I wanted to I could do a module like ping there I just ping three two five and four I didn't ping one so let's run script six and again the task in this only prints the inventory host magic variable so two three four and five so if you wanted to run something against all machines except for one or two you can just do comma and for every host that you don't want just put that bang symbol in front of it now we're looking at our last script for this section we want to run this task against all the people that are in group one but not the ones that are also in group two so one and two are in group one one two three four and five and three four five six and seven are in group two so this is only going to run against um, fake host one and fake host two So let's look and see what is in group one. List host, sorry. Those are the machines that are in group one. These are the machines in group two. So I want to run this against everyone in group one that's not in group two. And I can see three, four, and five are in group two. And they're also in group one. So it's only going to run in against one and two. So let's run our last script for this section. So just printed the inventory host name of F host one and F host two. So in this lab, we just kind of went over how to filter out multiple hosts. So you don't have to list each individual host and you can grab things from different groups, uh, filter out things from a group. So that's it for this video. I will start the other video here in a little bit. Thank you.